very much. And now, let me get to my guest in the studio, and we begin to uh, discuss the very important matters that have come up in the course of the week. Some of them more than a week. Some of them began as uh, later, sometime in August. I'm talking about the kidnaps, uh, kidnappings. So, my guest in the studio, Dr. Tony Orbing, is founder and president of AIE. Um, also here in the studio, James Agalga. He is MP, Bursa North. Martin Pebu is a lawyer. Of course, James is also a lawyer. Alexander Kwamina Afenyo Marking is MP, a Futu. He's also a lawyer. Right. Once again, good morning and welcome to the news file. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Thank you. Sir. So we begin with um, from the Bewa Palace. And this morning, for a very long time, decades, the Bewa Palace this morning is being decorated, is being occupied by an overlord, a dream that the people of Dagbon have looked forward many years, and it has eluded them. It's been an era of bloodshed after bloodshed. So let's listen to the president, Nana Abudani Akofuado, on peace in Dagbon. We'll hear Yana Abu Kari, the second. And we'll get to the studio to discuss the issues. We are not to rest on our oars and assume that every citizen of Dagbo is elated about the new peace and the enskinment of a new Yana. Indeed, there is a new term for people who profit from conflict. They are called conflict preneurs. We have to be resolute in warding of such people by strengthening the process of reconciliation amongst the people of Dagbon. The Dagomba people have Islam as their religion. And the Quran states, and I quote, when two groups of you fight, when two groups of you fight, make peace between them. But if one party is recalcitrant and persists in war, let the entire group come together to war them off." Unquote. We are not to fear the strategy of our enemies, but our own mistakes. Dagbon does not have to fear an external enemy. Dagbon is a great state, one of the most tradi ancient traditional states of our history. It has survived many marauding forces and repelled many enemies. Gabon, Gabon can only be brought to its knees by internal malcontents. And it is our collective duty and in our collective interest to fend them off. I therefore call on all sons and daughters of Gabon to unite behind the new Yana, Mahama Abukari II. He's a man of experience and dignity, and I'm confident he will discharge his duties of his new office with distinction. The Quran, as I have said before, I am neither an Abudu nor an Andani. I am an Abudani. Zuokan Karam, the one and the mammy is Zalana to Pana Hole. As all them getting yell at the one and the ma Yin Lana Shema. One is now come to her, can I bring you get to San Zuokan Kaburna? First of all, he wants to thank uh, the chiefs within Dagbang and even beyond. The lives of the representatives from the Asante Hini, Yogumura, Nayiri, 
the government delegation and His Excellency himself. And he also want to thank the former president, uh, John Draman Mahama, for his presence. And uh, he continue to say that uh, the position he's holding today is not for him alone, but for the entire Dagba. So he's calling on all chiefs and indigenous of Dagba to help him so that at the end of the day, Dagba will win. So do me and can you love me and go back? To tell them, so do them and take that one more. The ten semane, catch it up there. Can on the top sour. Now you can know that pony. That's a yellow thing you cut it up one back. That's what come to bang. Same thing, say you can not that one. Nothing I will have cut the one more. He want peace and unity. That is his mission. And that he alone cannot do it, but all individuals have rules. For that matter, it is a collective responsibility on us to try as much as possible to help him. So he is saying that he's calling everybody on board, whether you are coming from Abudu or Andani. And he did mention that the name Abudu and Andani is dead and gone. From today on going, we are now the Gombes. So he wants unity in Dagbang. He wants prosperity in Dagbang. So he wants the government to assist him so that there will be much development in Dagbang. His first objective is to make sure that he brings the people of Dagbon together so that we'll be one. If we come together, definitely there will be peace. And when there is peace, development will flow. So he did mention that uh, our municipal hospital is in a bad state and he's calling on government to uh, try and look after it because health is very important. We also have water crisis in Yendi here. And if you look at our internal rules within Yendi, very, very bad. So these are some of the challenges that he has. And he thinks that when we come together, definitely the government will also help us to resolve those challenges. <laughs> The, we shouldn't be in haste that we should just wait a while. We'll see what is going to happen in that bank. It's not a big task for him. You're welcome back. So you just heard the Yana, the new overlord of the Dagbang state. The president said Dagbang state. So <coughs> I'd like to go with the president and say Dagbang state. Um, Abdul Malik Kubako is watching us from wherever he's uh, taking his break. Doesn't like that idea. He says in a republic, stop doing these things. <laughs> right. So um, let me see. Start with... Uh, the man who is here this morning, because we are going to be talking about mining, um, you is president, founder and president of the Africa Institute of Extractive Industries, former you know, CEO of the Minerals Commission, former CEO of the Chamber of Mines. But he looks more an Abu Dhani this morning. <laughs> so let me start with him. I'll get to <coughs> you, all of you, including... Um, Afiyo Marking, who is also going to uh, Odumasi Krobo, obviously, for good reasons. So, how does it feel? How do you see what has happened in Dagbam? Well, thank you very much, and uh, let me greet your discerning uh, viewers. 
uh, as, as, as a traditional leader myself, I really am very excited. In fact, yesterday was a great news, I believe, not only for the people of Dagbon, but for the entire nation. As the president said, Dagbon is one of the key ancient states, historically, of this country. And they've gone through some of these things before. It's not new. But uh, in the last uh, how many years, two decades or so, we have gone through a very uncertain situation, a very uh, fierce situation, where, which did not only affect the people of Dagbon, but the entire nation. I'm sure Ghana spent quite a lot of money in trying to maintain uh, the semblance of peace that mm. we saw there. Mm. So uh, all of us must be very happy. All of us must congratulate um, the people of Dagbon and also welcome our new uh, uh, yeah. Yana and, and provide all the support that is required to ensure that there's stability in that area. The one thing that really excited me was the show of unity, and which, which is something that the nation needs. The, 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 the presence, the optic of unity is quite important, given the semblance of increasing uh, polarization of this country. And, and I saw that as a, an example or as a way of bringing the country more. I'm sure Ghanaians feel very well when they see this type of leadership where uh, you, have, you see the, the leaders working together, talking and showing signs that, look, we are uh, of one nation and of one people. So I think we must all be very happy, and that's the reason why I, I am in my uh, Abu, Abu, what did you say? Abudani. Abudani dress. <laughs> right. So that was the president giving us, you know, a name that you can't, you can't hear by, but think uh, how he came about coining it. Uh, very interesting. So let me get to Martin, Martin Pebble, who also, you know, has some some close yeah. part of him yeah, yeah. yeah in that part up. in that part yeah. of the country mm -hmm. um there are people who don't really believe that this is genuine and that this is the end of it mm. oh no 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 they are mistaken <laughs> they, are, they are totally mistaken because you know what um all this while it isn't as if the people themselves wanted to perpetuate the situation of uh, insecurity and uh, fighting amongst themselves. No. It was rather the case that there were a few conflict preneurs, as the president rightly identified. Mm. They were the ones stoking the fire. Okay. Yes, they were the ones stoking the fire. Because, Sam, you know it very well that these people are one people. They come from the same stock. Conflict preneurs did not ask for 40 of the elders and the overlord to be killed. I mean, that's when the matters got to a head. Yes, but they've always maintained that, look, is this conflict preneurs who are behind this? Because they are really brothers. And, you know, the history, once they are one blood, I mean, it doesn't make sense that they would continue to kill themselves day in, day out. So for me, uh, and you know, we've always as ascribed those uh, conflicts to politicians and all that. Yes, politicians cannot totally absolve themselves from the situation, you see. So they partly, out, uh, they're also part of so the So when conflict. he spoke about conflict preneurs, he was speaking uh, to... It's a large group. Apart from the politicians, there are also some people who have a vested interest. Mm. Yes, it's an open, it's not even like a question of open secret. It's known. And they averagely, if you follow chief tenancy conflicts, you know that politicians are always part. It's not only in northern Ghana. Every part of Ghana, you always know. Oh, I mean, even from the days of Kwame Nkrumah, you know how Kwame Nkrumah would chase out chiefs and all that, okay? Or Chihine, you had to leave, come to Accra. Oh, so many things, okay? Yes, yeah, so it's open. So that tells you uh, that, well, we've grown. We've grown, and so we are hoping that uh, next time politicians come around and the other conflict preneurs come around, the people will tell them, no, we want peace, and that will rather resolve our issues through ADR <coughs> or the court system, mm. you see, rather than killing ourselves. You see, I'm also very, very excited because, look, I tell you, sometime early this year, early January, fortuitously, I was compared by circumstances to go into Yendi. And somehow, then it started filtering that the Kampa Kuyana, that's the son of the uh, disease, uh, Yana, Yakubu Andani, was not going to ask to be made Yana. Because that was one of the contentious things. Because you know, before then, 
it had been said that because his dad was murdered, then he has to continue, and there is precedence for it. When I heard it, I was surprised. Yeah, and I mean, from reliable sources, it was shown that he wasn't going to ask to be made Yana. Mm. So that was just, I mean, a huge factor. And so even because of that, you know, people who understand this uh, situation on the ground, I've been saying that next time the president is going to give national awards, they should confer one of the orders, the order of the vote. Peace, peace, peace mm. Yes, yes, on him, the Kampakuyana. Okay. It's actually, uh, well, he went to St. Charles. He's uh, Jacob Tallinn, right? Of course, mm. he has a traditional... Uh, is he the one writer. who is said to have been offered and he rejected? I actually believe that's him. Okay. That's him. So what he said, and from reliable sources, I can say first-hand information, was that, look, because the Supreme Court has said a Yana must come from either Savlugu, uh, yeah. Mion or Karaga, and to the extent that he was not on any of these thrones, he wanted to go by the Supreme Court decision. <gasps> then I was like, hey, are you sure, Chief? Can you? And then from everything, it was clear that he was going to stick to his grounds. And lo and behold, he did. That okay. So it was clear that once his uncle was uh, the Savlugu chief, so it means at the time they were going in to, to consult the oracles, the proper candidate was only one. There was only one uh, uh, disqualified candidate. That was the chief of Savlugu. Because the Mion seat and the Karaga seat were uh, vacant. The chiefs had died, and they've not yet performed their funerals. Yeah. So it means that he was going alone. Yes, once. Uh, this in the camp Aquiana indicated that he was not going to, you know, mm. uh, contest. Mm. So he's done very well, exceedingly well. Okay. I think they should look, I think he should be giving. Of course, everybody else from the <laughs> eminent chiefs, so two, mm. four, and all, mm. they've all done marvelous. I mean, right. they've done excellent. Right. But this one, too, I mean, it took great fortitude for him to say, no, I've been regent for 17 years. I'm not going to contest. Because there have been times in the past where they've given it to the regent right. to continue because of the circumstances of the death of the, uh, his father, mm. you see. So okay. we must congratulate all of them. All right. uh, and so like they say in Dagbani, to Zhu Sun, right? Yeah, to Zhu Sun. All right, so let's, uh, let's hear from uh, James, mm -hmm. who also definitely has some you know, insight and information within the area. Um, look, how does it look that someone who was occupying this palace suddenly has to find himself move out um does it pretend anything i mean for the whole process well, something let me start by congratulating the newly esteemed yana and overlord of the dagbang traditional area um he's done very well he was a man who came from a relatively obscure background mm. and rose to fame very rapidly and became the Yuna, or if you like, the chief of Savulugu. Uh, now he's the Yana. I pay homage to him. May the good Lord grant him the wisdom of King Solomon to unite the people of Dagbang, an area that um, peace has eluded mm -hmm. for quite some time and uh, actually served as a drawback to the accelerated development of the area. I, I would also commend highly the Kampankuyana and uh, Martin has actually said it all. The fortitude of the Kampankuyana definitely contributed in no small measure towards making this entire process um, a success. He's exhibited a lot of leadership. And uh, Bolinala. Bolinala uh, oh, yes, Lana. I'll come to yes. that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And so I, I associate myself wholeheartedly with Martin when he suggests that <coughs> the uh, Kampankuyana should be recognized at the national level. The Bolinala has also done very well. Um, when I heard him congratulate the newly enskinned Yana, I was very, very excited. Why? Because if you um, reference the Supreme Court decision of 1986, uh, it was said in that particular decision that the skin is supposed to rotate. Uh, so if you go by the letter, not the spirit, the letter of that decision, once um, a yarn now from the 
Abudu, no, the Andani gate was no more. Quite naturally, the Abudus would expect that the skin should rotate to them. Right. But definitely he contested. He was not selected, but he was amongst the first to congratulate the newly skinned Yana. So right. I, I say kudos to him. The eminent chief. He said for as long as he leads them, anytime he, he looks back, he will see him. That's right. The eminent chiefs led by the Utufo have also done very well and deserve a lot of praise. I mean, they've gone through very trying moments. When President Kufo set, set it up in 2003, did you think that he had imagined slightly, remotely, that it would take this long for them to come to an end of the resolution? Well, I, I am sure um, in the heart and mind of President Kufo, he couldn't have envisaged right. that it would take 16 years for this matter to be resolved. <coughs> but whichever way you look at it, the matter has now been resolved. And right. so that committee needs to be commended. Look, there were times both gates found reason to withdraw from the mediation process. That's right. But, but the committee continued to work. The, and, and today, I think we've all reaped the benefits of the uh, um, good works. Mm. Congratulations to the Tunfo, the Yagbongura, and the Nairi. They've, they've really done very well, and their names would be written in the annals of the history of uh, Dagbang whenever the resolution process uh, comes to mind. Now, having said all these, I'd want to admonish politicians to refrain from attempting to politicize. You mean you, the NDC, and the MPP? And the MPP, yes. They should ref we should refrain. And I'm speaking directly to my brother here. <laughs> we belong to uh, opposing sides of the aisle in parliament. We should both refrain from attempting to politicize the processes that led to the peaceful resolution and enskinment of the um, new Yana. I, I have. Uh, had very disturbing remarks coming from certain quarters. I don't want to reference them here <coughs> because my mood is a happy one. And so when you do that, you, you destroy the happiness that has taken a long time. We can't, we can't, we can't behave like but ostriches, please. So what's the point? Mm -hmm. That members of the NPP are claiming that this is you know, a victory for the NPP. Yes. So and, when I and, saw... And what's, what would be wrong about that? Because the resolution has happened or uh, the culmination has happened Sir. during the tenure of President uh, Kufuado. Sir, one comment. Even Otufo said the president is just lucky. That's what Otufo said. He said President Kufuado is lucky that it happened during his time. Yes. So take that into context. Okay. So, yeah. Let, let, look, now let me be very blunt. When I saw billboards with the inscription, thank you, Mr. President, I said, what? Is this the beginning of the politicization of the processes that spans a period of 16 years? He's the president of the time. No, no, this no, is a no, process. no, but that is the, this is the process process lies initiated the danger. by the executive. Therein lies the danger, and we should all be cautious, because when we begin to do that, you force people to recall the sorrowful events that led to the murder of the uh, uh, Yana and brought us thus far. And remember that when the Yana was murdered, at that time, we all spoke about the complicity of government. Yes, and, and because, happened because, it time, happened, because it happened in Kufour's regime, yes. you, the NDC, blamed the Kufour administration for it. Yes. Well, he set up a committee, Yes. and now, in the regime of Akufuado, it's happened. Yes. So he should also take the praise no, for it. No, so, so you see, when you, how do you take the praise for a situation that was largely created by, by you? Remember that at the time, President Akufado was the Attorney General. And all the failures in, 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 in securing even one conviction. So if you fail, relative if you give the medics, failures on him, and now there is a success, why not? Something, that is why I think that we should desist mm. the political class yeah should desist you know that will not happen from right from taking credit for what has happened in you know Yemen. that will not happen correct but, but we should okay that is the part you know we this is going to be a major campaign issue right that no campaign issue yes you 
In any case, there are aspects of the matter that remain unresolved. For instance, the murders have not been resolved. Justice is yet to be done. So the coronation of a new Yana is um, a good step in the right direction, but there are, there are aspects, the justice aspects to the matter largely remains unresolved. So I wonder how anybody can seek to use this as a campaign platform. If they do, they, I mean, they, they, they're going to be met with all the facts, the historical antecedents mm. of the Yendi crisis, and so on and so forth. I see. So I mean, and, and that 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 would not bode well for the unity of Dagbang. Okay. We 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 wish that we put those things behind us, mm. so that the new Yana can begin to reach out to the two gates, and show that the uh, skin gates uh, eligible candidates are elevated to occupy those gates, okay. so that we revert to the rotational system to avert. I mean, future conflict mm. and crisis. Okay. So now, immediately, what do you expect <coughs> to happen going forward? Uh, there, there are a number of funerals to be performed, right? Absolutely. Yeah. In, in, in most of the um, towns and villages, you, you, you notice that the occupants of the skins are regions. You can talk about Tolong, Gushewu. You can talk about even now, Savulugu, where the current Yana was chief, is now vacant. Karaga is vacant, Myang is vacant. These are all important uh, skins. If you want the Dagbang traditional council to function effectively, the Yana has to settle down quickly and begin to work. And let us understand, what was the problem that they were unable to perform those funerals of those who left those skins? What, yes, why? I, I, well, it, it, it all had to do with the protracted nature of the uh, conflict in, in, in Yendi. Once you had the, some semblance of a vacuum, even though there was none, because customarily the regent wills all the powers of Ayana, right. and, and this has been proven throughout the period, I mean in history. Somehow, because the committee of eminent chiefs took a certain decision that the regent shouldn't exercise certain rights that are customary in nature anyway, and remember that many people contested uh, that decision of the committee of eminent chiefs and right. at, at the heart of the conflict was also the unwholesome character of that decision. So I think at that time they, there was a lot of hesitation. Okay. But, but the right thing was done mm. with respect to uh, uh, Savulugu. Okay. And so, so today we have the so Yana. Let's, let's hear from Afenyo and I will get back to all of you for just two minutes each um, what you have to say about your expectations, particularly to uh, maintaining the peace and the development of the area. Yes. Um, well, uh, <coughs> something. Uh, yes, and thank you very much for making the time. I know that you are going to uh, a Jacon's place. Both of but, us. Yes, the two of you. You see, we're in but black. But you made time to yes, come yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Mm. In my case, uh, the party's uh, uh, wish was that I, I come and. Okay. Uh, all because uh, Mr. Jacon never missed uh, his schedules on the AM show yeah. in Asempa. Mm. Very committed to the work of the party and uh, the country's development. It's a sad day for Parliament, NPP, and the government. There's a man who worked hard. Uh, unfortunately, I was in the US uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, the decision of a colleague MP and my good self were that we're going to visit him. Mm. And that afternoon the text message came just as we were on our way. So it came as a, as a shock. Mm. And uh, today everybody is moving to uh, Oduma Sukrabo. And uh, the party is going to give him a, a, a sitting <coughs> power. Yeah. Um, tomorrow. Uh, there's going to be a Thanksgiving service at Zimmerman uh, uh, Presbyterian Church. Uh, but today, the service is ongoing you now, and I'm sure right. my colleagues are there. So, so you move there uh, from here? Yes, okay. and uh, um, I know that uh, the good people of uh, Ayawasu West Wugon will honor his good works by getting an NPP uh, person to replace. Oh. 
him. Ideally, you want to politicize okay. our. Am I am I able to am I able to make my point <laughs> without you, you uh, disturbing? Do you me? want to politicize the Something. death? Let's let's mm. James. beat him fair way. Okay. Am, okay. am I able to am I able to am I able to make my point? It's an appeal without? he's making. I think yeah, if you allow James, him to I make a let's move keep on. Quiet. James, allow him to make his appeal and let's move on. Can you do that quickly so that we get to yeah? So. But I advise to, to give the honor politicization him. of Very well, some no of problem. these things. That's yeah. okay. No problem. To honor him, the party's uh, wish is to see a replacement in parliament mm. of the candidate we have put up. Uh, the party is committed to uh, the development of Ayoaso West. Mm. And I'm sure that can be a hegemony. Uh, an MPP hegemony, or so the, to speak. So, it's, so of course, it's the, with the people to determine whether they want another. That's MPP the call now. I've made, right? And I'm sure that, mm. considering his good works, okay, uh, the little honor, right, would be mm. to give our candidates right. the opportunity to right. continue the good works. Because now, he was um, a nice one. Um, now, he, he had wished and, and asked me to get into into parliament wow. yeah. yeah so i told uh, him I, i'm not interested <laughs> for the time being <laughs> for always <laughs> never say never <laughs> for always uh, so let's go so for now always. back to uh -huh. back to the dark bone issue you see council <coughs> it is important to acknowledge the effort of the government in ensuring the lasting peace in that book. government did what it had to do. You mean the government of Ghana? Of course. Okay. The NPP government led by Nana Adudanko Akufad showed leadership. What happened was not uh, an issue of mere luck. It was an issue of hard work, commitment, trust being built here and there. I could have didn't set up the committee. I've, I've, I'll come there. I'll, I'll come there. The he, committee uh, didn't start uh, its work uh, in uh, 2017. I would, I would come there. Okay. I'll come there. The process had begun. Mm -hmm. But for that process to continue, you need commitment. And that's the point I'm making. You recall that even on the day that um, Otumfo presented his report, there were a few issues here and there. Even when the funerals started, uh, RegSec had to intervene and all that. Behind the scenes, there were talks. There were perhaps attempts to stampede the process. So if we have finally had a safe landing. So you dispute Otunfo, who is a chairperson of that committee, uh, who says that Ooh, this was a lucky president. Yes. <laughs> oh, Sheer luck. Listen, if he says he's a lucky president, mm. He's using that phrase in the context of the final outcome, all right? That you are lucky. Okay. You are blessed. That in your time, your efforts were not in vain. And don't misquote the, the respected uh, chief, mm. all right? So I am saying that there are lessons to learn from the Dagbon issue. Okay. Mr. President, in his speech, drew our attention to one important point. Don't let us m become our own enemies. External factors are there. But you, the people of Dagbon, you have made this peace possible. Take the commendation. <coughs> and going forward, be careful of the conflict between pioneers and all those people, politicians, whatever it is. As a politician, I would hesitate in drawing this conclusion that politicians interfere. Because I've been at the grassroots, and it's the same people who will come and look for patronage. <coughs> Some people, I mean, uh, we can't start a new debate on that line. But I am saying that for those who would also seek patronage, should also be careful that, look, we have gotten to the end of the process. It Gates it Gate had had their own <coughs> demands, and they aligned with the political parties, depending on the assurances and promises you that made is, to them. That is why I'm saying that. That is why I'm saying so that. So there there's Petro a gate that believes that it is the NPP that can give us this. Mm -hmm. There's the other gate that believes that it's the NDC that can give us that. And you guys encourage and continue to assure them that you will do it. 
Today, we have a win-win situation, don't we? We do. Good. So let's move on from there. Right. On the issue of the point, and uh, the, the, uh, James's, uh, uh, there shouldn't be politicization. Why? When a driver hits a pedestrian on the Adenta Medina Road, the focus is not on the driver being prosecuted for killing another. The focus is on government inability to provide a footbridge. When free SHS, we don't have sufficient furniture, the focus is not on the savings that parents are making by virtue of that social intervention policy, but the focus is on the inability of government to provide sufficient furniture. These examples Please, can I make analogous. my point? Stop this, you're a lawyer. I mean, let me make the point. I don't get it. So I'm saying that if government would be, uh, uh, as it were, be called upon to show leadership and show our security, there are murders, people are being kidnapped, what is the call? Government take action. I am saying that in equal breath, be sincere by saying that, look, government has done it. You know, in submissions, I never heard him say, oh, at least, Mr. President, deserve some commendation. I said, I said successive said, governments. Please, please, please. Successive governments include James, President James, Dakufado. I don't get your point. Right. No, no, but you're James, attributing okay. something James, to me which is not okay. right. Take a note. Okay. Let me finish. And then you come in. You've interjected me from the word go. You are going to, you're going to have a next James, round. James, you know that okay. I can Thank equally you. do Thank what you're doing Thank to you. me. Thank you. Shamima says I should Smile, small. I've seen the tech. <laughs> Today I'm not in a but very good mood. But you know, mo if you actually do things James, to James. do okay. that are not right, okay. I so, so you know what? You know what? I will stop Something. you in your look at, tracks. Look at your audience. Something. And, it and you know, you know who is watching and very listening to you. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> don't say you reply, no, James, no, no, in the no, no, I'm not saying Go that ahead I and do it. Him, but right. he knows that okay. I have what it takes. Thank you. Thank to you. stop him when he he's also speaking. That one I won't hide from. Okay. So you should be more responsible and allow me to make my point. Proceed. Thank you. So I expect. The NDC, represented on this platform by James Agaga, to show some patriotism. The government of the day has made it. Commend the government in absolute terms. If you have other positive comments, add it. But don't just begin by going the pedestrian way. Oh, you've heard some people, you have heard some people. Why? Until the Unfortunate incident in 2003, where the people of the Dagon area, no voting in a certain pattern, didn't that change that pattern of votes, voting? So perhaps you are worried that there is now a lasting peace. I say perhaps. So let's let's not go there. Comments. We you have. Mean, a, can you, you keep quiet? Your, your you don't want them to be. It doesn't matter. So note it. No. They are provocative. They are note provocative. Note them. Note them. I need respond. to stop you in your tracks. I mean, you are treading on very dangerous. So grounds. note them. Very dangerous. James. Grounds. Note them. James. You have started. He started James. it on so Friday. James. Even James. on uh, Jacoustin, he came in. I don't know what what he ate um, this morning. I I think that was friendly. So you conclude. So I think that the mere fact that. Former President Mahama was there with his national chairman, general secretary, other political leaders, other chiefs were there. Was sufficient signal that look, all stakeholders appreciate what the government has done. Mm. And that all stakeholders would want to benefit from the fruits of this peace. We have iron ore deposits in in, in the Dagbon area. Last week when I was on this platform, I pointed out that some investors are in town. There is a legislation that is coming when we resume next week. Now, for somebody to come and invest <coughs> over uh, $500 million, that person will want to see some peace. Right. And in the absence thereof, mm. the person will not want to risk. Now, let me conclude by appealing to all stakeholders in the Efutu chieftaincy matter. Today, Nana Akufuadu says he's uh, an Abudani. Mm -hmm. I want somebody in Winneba 
So also proudly says he is an Irigati. Because we've had too much of this. Samson, as a, an MP, my biggest headache, my headache is the issue of conflict in Winneba. Two years ago, Honorable Kandapa, through national security, spent so much to make sure that the abortion was calm, we had all the support and all that. And back to the issue of people trying to fuel conflict. After the main stakeholders had agreed and we had had the, the quiet discussions, last minute, some people just scattered everything <laughs> and even started accusing the, the, the elders that they okay. have <laughs> taken bribe and all, right. all that. Yeah. That is unfortunate. So mm. it's, a, it's an appeal. We are mm. going to have an abortion this year. All right. Let all stakeholders, please, Nukranipi, Oskwafa. Thank you. Thank you. So we are ending on the on the exact uh, um, minutes, as in when it is uh, ten ten o'clock. So, um, Martin. Okay. So let me come to the miner <laughs> first, who is himself a chief. That's what you said. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> you are chief of which area? I am the uh, champion of Daman. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, what are your expectations in, in, in two minutes? What are your expectations? What do you what do you propose ought to be done to keep the peace and promote development in Dagbon? Well, first of all, uh, interestingly, I find myself among lawyers. <laughs> all four are lawyers, <laughs> and uh, I'm the only, as you call, minor <laughs> here. <laughs> and, and then, of course, you see the politicians always showing their political uh, colors. Now, uh, on, on, on the issue of my expectations, I, I think the people of Dagbong themselves must appreciate the requirement of peace for development. Okay. And that, that's really an important thing. And everybody, all Ghanaians, um, must support any effort to sustain the peace that, that is now there. All right. Secondly, I would be very careful with politicians talking the fires directly or indirectly. I think that is one of the bane of this country. And it's very difficult to cure it because politics is what it is. It's also about division. But there are certain areas where we should all uh, you know, note that by always emphasizing our division, we, we, we fail to, to, to get the development that we want. So I, I, I would, I would, I would um, advise or suggest that politicians must be circumspect in trying to uh, stoke fires, in, you know, because they're, 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 the people are still there. Right. The confl con conflict premiers are mm. still around, mm. and if they had any other opportunities supported by uh, either government in power, by party in power, or party that's seeking to come to power, they would want to align and then stoke the fire. And please, right. let's, let's, let's try and, and avoid that. Okay. So, uh, Martin, President Rawlings commended uh, President Kofuado, all the Otunfo, Osei Tutu, the Yagba um the, the Nayiri, um, the, you know, all the persons who were involved in the process and said that the people of Dagba have gone through a painful period. And he concluded a part of his statement. He said, too many years have been wasted in a state of suspended conflict due to the lack of justice. It is now time to dedicate yourselves to peace and development, mindful of the complicity, complexity of your history. As far as he's concerned, part of the path to sustain this is justice. Um, uh, uh, James mentioned that. How do they go about this? Hmm. Yeah. That's a very difficult question, eh? very difficult, because I'm saying so because, you know, there have been two trials. And even apart from the trial, there was a Uwaku Commission that came out with findings. There was a government white paper. Then there were the trials, okay, uh, read. They were tried and then were acquitted. And even, you know, the current deputy, uh, one of the current deputy foreign ministers, Alaji Tijani, mm -hmm. you see, Mohammed. Yeah. He was also tried he w with a group of uh, other uh, persons, and they were uh, acquitted. So um, <coughs> in talking about justice, yes, perhaps justice, but not justice in the courtroom in terms of a formal trial until there is evidence. So maybe the easier thing to say is that 
perhaps investigations can continue quietly. So as and when there is uh, sufficient evidence to mount a criminal uh, trial, then so be it, it can be done. Okay. Yes, so it's all about the evidence. Mm. But so far, with the evidence that we've had, the two trials did not succeed. Should, should the path to justice mm -hmm. not be rather like the path that has led to this, this uh, resolution? Mm -hmm. Reconciliation mm -hmm. can also be a process of seek, a process of justice. Perfect. Yes. So yep. that we all say we f we forgive the past. Okay. We want to move on. Perfect. Yes, exactly on point. Uh -huh. So that's a hard difficulty. We say we should go into court. Yes. So uh, doing reconciliation is good. In our history, we had a national reconciliation commission. Mm -hmm. Yes. So those experts who helped in the I remember process. the last time when you were on this show on mm -hmm. this issue, mm -hmm. you spoke about compensations and yes. things like that. Perfect. Yes, I think you've had the job cut out for me. Yes, you know, as I even mentioned in early January when I walked into Yendi, yes, oh, the, the poverty was just too much. It's written the whole area. I mean, it didn't just look. Because as I mentioned, we lived there uh, years, I mean, decades ago, when we were quite small. Okay, my uncle taught in Yendi Secondary School, then from there moved to Bimbi Line. So you would have expected that. Uh, from about 19, what well, the 80s till now, at least the towns should have grown that much, right. but it isn't what we expected. Mm. I'm mindful that the uh, president, they've uh, started a project where parliament is here to approve for water, so we can do more. Maybe they should, maybe a fund should be set up, yes, then various individuals, private organizations, and so, so on and so forth can contribute. So that will help bring about development in the area. Okay. And also for those who lost properties and all that, they can be compensated. That, that would help immensely. All yes, right. Something, help. All right. Point of information. Uh, yes. Regarding the Yindi water, um, Ghana Water, the board I chair, mm -hmm. approved an MOU okay. between uh, Ghana Water and Bio Water. Good. So what is left, the credit arrangements have all been put in place. Is left with the process of parliamentary approval. That's right. Okay. So about. yeah, I just wanted you to mm. okay. right. make clear that oh, the Ghana Water has approved okay. the whole yes. Uh, yes. The uh, transaction. So it's just left. Cabinet has approved it. So approved. I'm sure that uh, um, the minority will not stampede right. it. Okay. So that the Yendi people will get water as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I remember one yeah. sentence. And also, yeah. Yeah. yes, yes, one comment. <laughs> yes, yeah. I've seen that. Uh, there are so ah. many more information. Sam's in, in there's the an answer. <laughs> in the list of... Uh, no, no, he yeah. says that some... He says that... No, no, no. Yeah. Let me report this. He says that Kennedy <laughs> Japan made a statement and it amounted to some offense. He said it to me. He should tell whether it's an accident or it's an... Because I want to take it as an assault. Yeah. He hit me. Okay. Samson, yes. he hit me. <laughs> okay. I am saying he's hit me. Okay, go and tell the police. No, no, I'm informing you. <laughs> All right, he, thank you. He's just, <laughs> thank you. What's an answer? Right. Right. As, 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 as a chief, I'll settle that. He has, All right. he has <laughs> aimed the game. All right. And, <laughs> and, 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 and as an ADR practitioner, yeah. I will step in and settle it. Thank you. Thank you. Then you say you want to join my Thank you. Thank you. Let Martin finish. Let Martin finish. The majority should not a certain process. Right, yes. My last comment is that, you see, when this peace process started long ago. There have been so many actors <coughs> okay, who helped to bring this process to where it is today. So I think we should do, maybe, for lack of a better word, we should have some like um, a gathering where we would acknowledge all these people, okay, the contributions, have an official report on it, and you know, everything to it. Because you see, so many people, so, right. so many, Emmanuel Bombandi, the UN uh, resident coordinator, at the time here, the staff there, some of those people have now moved to various right. countries. So we should have a comprehensive mm. write-up and acknowledgement and thanks. And right. especially Kandapa, you see, he's been working on the quiet. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot. I mean, as I said, having gone on the grounds from what I heard, Kandapa was really working very hard. Right. The whole national security apparatus and all that. So that's why some say it's a thankless job. But okay. I think we should make it. All right. Uh, we should recognize uh, So that. we talk about the Kandapas and we should, when it started, and I was covering the process in the uh, Mesha Palace. Yeah. All the ministers, the Minister of Interior at the time, mm -hmm. the, the Northern Regional Minister at the time, Mustafa Ali. Ali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Mustafa, I forgot Idris. Mustafa Idris. Idris. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Um, they yeah. were towering figures. There were times when things would break down. And you see, the people, the chiefs involved, the eminent chiefs themselves, 
all deserve a tons of you know appreciation because exactly. there were times that things broke down in such a way that it looked almost impossible for them to come back again mm. but they were able to be talked to they will move into their various hotels they will spend long hours sometimes it's, it could take a day or two and then tempest will come down and they will come back so uh, it is important in that direction so in in one one minute james um well, something, what, um, for what, me, what, what should be done to project development in the area? Yes, I think, um, first of all, government must recognize the fact that the conflict in Yendi mm -hmm. was a major drawback to the accelerated development of the area. Right. And so now that peace has re-emerged, Yendi should be the focus of government. And I am happy that the chairman of Ghana Water mm. says uh, processes are far advanced for uh, the um, facility the water that project. Yes, mm. they want to take in respect of the Yendi Water Project to All be right. brought before Parliament for approval. Mm. I can assure him that we have Dagbang at heart. Mm. And so when he sits in this studio and says um, the minority should not stampede. Why don't you just say you will approve it without any hesitation? No, 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 no. no he says uh. we, we the, as the minority, should mm. not stampede the mm. process. Okay. And that we should allow the um, approval process. So just tell us what you would do. Yes, so we, we, we yeah. would support mm. the process. Okay. Any, 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 any right. yes, endeavor, I mean, in that respect, right. would be supported by all. It is our collective effort right. to ensure that the Dagbang traditional area catches up with the rest of the country all right. in terms of its development. But, okay. but, my, but my last word, last word, my friend says, I ought to have commended government in absolute terms. And I wish to state categorically that it cannot happen because the, the, what happened in Yendi yesterday was a process. Okay. It wasn't an event. Right. And so it is successive governments that must take the credit, okay. not the government of President Akufado. Mm. They cannot take absolute credit for whatever happened okay. in Yendi right. yesterday. All right. Um, I, I'm okay, done with you. Minute. You ended on such a perfect note okay, in so speaking. Be, uh, if we, you didn't allow me to yeah, even finish. That was, that, was, that was fantastic. Um, so I'm taking, a, I'm taking a break here on this note from <laughs> Nana Aure Damoa. He says, I always maintain that peace in Dagbang would come when the people of Dagbang themselves decide that it is time for peace. Let no one take that credit away from them. No politician or political party should dilute the euphoria by any myopic self-adulation. We'll be right back. <laughs>